If it's impossible, let me do it. I like the challenge, just to make the impossible possible. That I was born on a Sunday afternoon on January 6 in 1935. My earlier years were overshadowed that my grandfather had been Jewish and the Jewish question became a big issue during the Nazi years. The Nazis had taken power over in 1933 and established complete new laws. And as a matter of fact, my mother and my father, they married on the last day it was possible when Jewish blood could be mixed with Aryan. Meanwhile, my grandfather had been being Jewish. He was arrested and was uh, was an inmate of Dachau concentration camp. And I think he was there for about a year and a half. And But all our money had been confiscated. We were not real wealthy, but we lived comfortable. But suddenly there was no money, no income. So my mother, being only about one, 21 or 22 years old at the time, she started, uh, since we were somehow connected to photography, she started a photo finishing business where she made contact with photo shops in our area and drugstores who collected roll films at those days. And uh, she would process it, and that's how we had some income coming in. We never... We never lost our pride. We always knew we were going to make it somehow. It was just your instinct of survival. So I was conditioned to see dead bodies at a very early age and, it re and realized when, when things happen, there's no one there to react, to help you. You're, you're caught in a situation you have to deal with. But meanwhile, Americans are coming closer and... And suddenly, the guy was standing in front of me. He said, my first American, face to face, about two feet away. He asked me a question, and we just exchanged a glimpse, a friendly smile. And I knew I survived. I survived. Meanwhile, my grandfather had survived Dachau concentration camp. He determined that at age 14, I should leave higher education school and become a photographer. And so over there, if you start a career, you become an apprentice in some shop. You have to find in any profession, baker, butcher, and you name it what, a shop which has a master. So about five miles away from where I lived, there was a father and son, good reputation, photo atelier, and I became apprentice, an apprentice there. Uh, you don't start taking pictures right away. We took pictures. The, the main camera was an old view camera, and pictures were taken on glass plates in those days. So my job, I never was able to take a picture of a customer till about in my second or third year. But I developed the film. I mixed the chemicals and de developed the glass plates and stuff like that. I learned how to retouch pictures because besides the portrait shop, we were finishing photographs, films as well. It would take six years in addition to where you could eventually, after working constantly during those six years, you could apply for a master degree. Since it was essential if you wanted to have your own business to have a master degree, I said, well, I don't know what's going to happen. I'll go for... Uh, at 23 years of age, I had a master degree. Not many had this at that age before me. I thought I was the smartest man there. But then I ran into a, a master of photography in Switzerland and he showed me what I was lacking. I knew all the how to take pictures, but I had no vision of what a good, what an artistic picture should look like. He, I had talked to my stepfather and he encouraged me. He said, never copy anyone, find your own style, but go analyze pictures, go to museums, analyze the great painters, how they used color, light, and composition, and this opened my eyes. 
my style is to have a focal point. One thing I keep preaching to kids, whatever you see out there, you have to, a picture has to have some interest. You have to keep, all you will be reduced to a small size, so, so your picture has to have a focal point and as much information as possible. So in order to get that, I had to work with wide angles, a telephoto lens. I always considered that, I call it the coward's lens, to sit back and just play candid camera. That's not my style. I'm aggressive, I move in, I need a focal point and the surroundings. I usually saw a picture before I shot it. For me, the camera was just to get my idea on film, like you would use a typewriter to write a story. Meanwhile, I had taken pictures at the Capitol too. In those days, to go on the floor was not permitted, to go on the floor while the house was in session. But who that didn't stop me. If one of the legislators would go up and give his talk, I said, now i got to get the move. Without looking around, I looked down, go up, bingo, get the surrounding, got the shot. Sometimes I waited a little longer because the expression was perhaps not quite what I wanted at this time. So this went on. They just smirked. They were used to having me down there, creeping around like a mouse to take pictures. I never was there more than two minutes. I never violated any other rules than just being there. If a governor would give a speech to the legislature, well, it was natural for me to come in from the side, to shoot over his back and get the, the complete house. I knew the wide angle would do that. I get everything in focus with the wide angle. I'm so appreciative for, about being alive, having been born, to be just alive, to live on this earth, that little speck in that great universe. I'm just worried about the country right now. I have lived in a dictatorship. I was born under a Nazi system, and I just do not want to see this great country to end up in a in a society where freedom and democracy are not ruling everyday's life. Look for the truth, and the truth will always win.